This letter, the letter that I'm holding in my hand right now, is a glowing example of one of the most ubiquitous problems in modern marketing today. What problem is that? The problem is the left hand has no idea what the right hand is doing. Now internally, it's almost impossible to spot examples of this in your own company. It's really hard to see the siloed departments or the shape of the org chart and the effect it has on your customer or client. So what we have to do is get outside of our own universe and look at it from the customer's perspective. This problem is costing you customers, it's costing you clients, it's costing you prospects and it's costing you money. And we're gonna take a look at it today with this letter. Yes, a real physical letter that arrived yesterday. And this letter is gonna help me help you understand why everyone in your organization needs to think like a marketer. But before we dive in and really understand what's in this letter, I need some coffee and my morning walk. All right, I've had some coffee. Now, let's dive into this letter that I received. Now, the letter is from Mercedes-Benz Financial Services. Uh, now, this letter actually says, thank you for choosing Mercedes-Benz Financial Services as your dedicated finance source. Our records indicate that your lease will expire on February 14th, 2018. We understand that you will be returning your vehicle and have enclosed information to guide you through the return process. We encourage you to carefully review the enclosed material to understand your lease and responsibilities. And it goes on, blah, 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 to tell me about an inspection and termination obligations and repairs. And this letter is from Nancy Alvarez, the lease maturity management team, I guess, with no other enclosures than this one piece of paper. Now, in order to really understand the impact this kind of letter has on your business, you need to get inside the mindset of the person who receives this letter. So in order to do that, I want you to think about the moment I went to go get my mail. Now let's stop right there. The moment this letter arrived, I wasn't thinking, hey, my lease is maturing in two months, maybe I should go and buy a new car. I was not even thinking about my vehicle. But the minute I opened this letter, I started thinking about a vehicle. And the first question that popped into my mind wasn't, boy, I should get on this checklist of crap to do before I return my Mercedes. The first question on my mind is, what car am I going to buy next? Here's the flaw with this letter. Mercedes-Benz Financial Services is your right hand. They have sent me a piece of correspondence that's clerical in nature. They're inviting me to do exactly what's on the list to return the vehicle so that my lease ends in a timely and hospitable fashion. Now, the left hand, the sales team, has no idea this letter has gone out because if they did, they would have called me or they would have sent something along with this to try to get me into another Mercedes. I am now officially, the moment this arrives, in the market for a new Mercedes. Let me take you on a drive. Let's go to the beach in this car that I need to return in less than two months. And let me show you some caveman PowerPoint to explain exactly what's going on here. Let's head to the beach. Now this morning, I wasn't planning on buying a vehicle, 
but I, I was immediately inspired to go on a journey I never expected and buy a new car. The first question I had is, what car am I going to buy? And as I drive even to the beach, I start looking for cars to add to my list. This is what's called active evaluation. We start adding and subtracting brands, even mentally. We're not online even, I'm not Google searching, I'm just driving to the beach. And as I see a car I might be interested in, like right now uh, there's a beautiful Jeep Grand Cherokee, I add that to my list. The Jeep Grand Cherokee is a possible car in my active evaluation, and I mentally store that. Now I haven't gone very far, but that is an Audi Q5. And I actually like the Audi Q5. In fact, three years ago, before I leased this very vehicle, we test drove the Audi Q5 and I kind of liked that car. I think we should add that to the list in active evaluation. When you're in the market for a product or service, you start noticing things you never noticed before. I start looking at every vehicle thinking, could this be my next vehicle? This is a Volvo XC90. Not bad, I'll add it to the list. This process of adding and subtracting brands as you move farther and farther away from that first question that you asked and your initial brand like Mercedes gets you closer and closer to buying a product by someone other than the person who sparked the journey in the first place. Look at that. What is that? That was a Porsche Macan. I am definitely adding the Porsche Macan to my list. So at this point, I have quite a few brands on my list in active evaluation. I certainly have the Mercedes because I'm driving it. It was the first brand that came to my mind because they sent the letter, but they didn't do anything to capture me and keep me into their circle, to keep me in their loyalty loop. Instead, they've sent me out, even just to the beach, where now I'm exploring lots and lots of other brands. All right, we are at the beach. Now it is time for me to show you the framework that I use to understand this cycle. All right, I've got a stick, we're at the beach, and I'm ready for some caveman PowerPoint. Let's start with the moment of commitment. Three years ago, I committed to the Mercedes brand, and everything past that moment in the loyalty loop they could have been focused on maintaining that relationship, ensuring that when my lease was up for renewal, they were ready to sell me the next vehicle and I was the happiest customer on earth. Instead, what they did over the course of this relationship is nothing. They sent me a bill. And the time in which they are about to get me into a new vehicle is called the moment of inspiration. The minute I picked up that letter out of the mailbox, they inspired me to go on a journey I never expected to go on that morning. And instead of drawing me back right into a new commitment with Mercedes, they've sent me off on a wild goose chase, adding and subtracting brands I never would have considered if they had just sold me the next Mercedes. To me, it doesn't seem that hard to understand that they have my address, they know what car I drive, and they even know the exact date in which I'll be giving up that vehicle, and they did nothing to retain me as a customer. The left hand doesn't know what the right hand is doing. That's enough caveman PowerPoint. Let's go back to the office. As marketers, we spend a huge amount of time working to acquire new customers, but very few, if any of us, have maximized our loyalty loop. This really intrigues me. So over the next 52 weeks, I'll be exploring the loyalty loop. That's right, I'm embarking on a journey to find out how brilliant brands turn micro moments into big business. So if you want to go on the journey with me, if you want to leverage the customers, clients, prospects, leads, and subscribers you've got to generate a never-ending cycle of new business, and you want to know how other brands are doing it, hit that subscribe button and let's transform our way of doing business from the loyalty loop out.
Because the truth is, most of us are too much like Mercedes. Consider this, every time you send an invoice, a receipt, an appointment confirmation, attend a meeting, deliver a report, or make a phone call, you and your brand are creating new moments of inspiration. That's right, your invoice may in fact send your client on a journey to seek out a new provider. Your voicemail may prompt a customer to call a competitor. Your email newsletter may send a subscriber on a journey to buy something you never intended. And this, well this is what's fascinating. So let's help Mercedes solve their loyalty loop problem. What could the fine folks at Mercedes-Benz have done to keep me in their loyalty loop? And while you're thinking about that, maybe it's time we all look at our transactional communications with our customers, clients, prospects, and leads. Maybe our own business has a blind spot. Maybe you're creating moments of inspiration and you don't even realize it's happening. A blind spot just like the one we've uncovered with this very letter in the very first episode of The Loyalty Loop.